is Eddie, and he's our seven-year-old boy. And like every single seven-year-old out there, the things that he loves is playing with Angry Birds. I know that most of you know what that is. Playing with cars. Actually, he makes his own car tracks. He enjoys doing that a lot. And he's fascinated about space and planets. We don't take for granted anything about Eddie. Not a smile, not a word, not a gesture, not a single look. Because we lived for so long without him. We lost him for over three years. We did not have him. And now that he's back, we are not intending to miss anything. In fact, we're actually planning to spend our whole life enjoying every single moment of his life. And today you have given me a great opportunity to be here and share with you a big and important part of my life. I'll share with you three things. And when you go out of that door today, I want you to remember these three things. Our story, what we learned about it, and what we had to do about it. Our story is no different than many stories out there in the United States today. A kid is born healthy, he then becomes ill, he then goes and becomes disconnected, he gets an autism diagnosis. Simple as that. And that happens to us. Eddie was born healthy. He was born a beautiful baby boy, sharp, alert, happy, affectionate. He then became sick. He was always sick. He started to have ear infections, diarrhea, allergies to the medications that they were given for the ear infections, very recurrent bronchitis, allergies to medications, vomiting, the works. It then progresses to affect his behavior. And by the time that he was a toddler, he was impossible to handle. We lost every kind of communication with our son to the point that we could put him in the middle of the room at the age of 18 months. And that same baby that were crawling and walking to us completely could not even tell if mommy and, and daddy had been gone for a whole week. It was the same thing for him. Completely lost, isolated, sick, crying, non-sleeping, impossible to handle. We went for, for, we looked for help and we got meds and we tried meds and it didn't work and he kept being sick. We, uh, later on, a few months later, when he was two and a half years old, we received devastating news from our developmental pediatrician that Eddie had autism. And uh, on December 6, 2007, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, I received the diagnosis along with two letters, actually two papers. One had a list that said all the therapies that Eddie could try. And the other one is a was a list of mental institutions around the Houston area that we should think about en uh, enrolling Eddie when he was 18. With those two papers and my crying son and my devastated husband, we went back home. We sit down and for the longest time, I, I think months, we just cried and had an immense amount of pain and guilt and confusion and it was looking at someone that wasn't there. Eddie was miserable, and we were miserable with him. He was crying all the time. He was spinning. He was throwing up all the time. He was with chronic diarrhea. He was uh, just, you know, nonverbal. It was, it was a mess. And after all, there was nothing we could do because autism had no cure. That's a story, the same story that many parents today are suffering in the United States. Things that we learned that I want to share with you. We've learned that the Center of Disease Control in the United States reported that one in 88 kids are being diagnosed with autism this year. One in 56 are boys. We learned that $137 billion are being spent this year only in benefits from the government to kids and patients diagnosed with autism. We learned that the medical community is basing their diagnosis purely in behavior. And when you do this, it's based on the definition of, of infantile autism defined by Dr. Leo Conard right here, a famous psychiatrist who, in his work in 1943, defined infantile autism as the inborn lack of affection. 
we learn that our kids, the kids like Eddie, do not fit this definition. They were born healthy. We learned that they're sick, that there's actually a lot of relationship between the immune system dysfunction and behavior. And this behavior is very much likely, very similar like autism behavior. We learned that they're very sick, that they have gastrointestinal problems with chronic uh, candida infections, permeable intestines, and bacterial imbalances. They have parasites problems, and these are pictures from my son. Except with this one with the diaper here, all the pictures I'm showing today are Eddie's. They have problems with viral-induced inflammation in the brain. And guess what? These are all medical conditions, and they have treatment, and they have cure. Actually, if you treat the viral infections, and you manage to control the blood flow in the brain, the parts of the brain that are not developed start connecting and start developing. Guess what? The parts of the brain that do not receive the blood flow are the ones in the temporal lobes, which are the ones responsible for communication, language, and interaction. No wonder they can interact, and no wonder they can communicate. There's nothing going, there's no blood flow going through this part of the brain, and there's no communication, there's no activity. Actually, you can see Eddie's brain from last year on the top here, and this is a few weeks ago. All the red parts are new parts activating and trying to get that brain healthy. He started to read this year. He actually, his comprehension increased over 60% close to a kid his age. This is possible and this is medical treatment. We also learned that there's a microglial cell in the brain that is in charge of controlling the inflammation or the immune response to inflammation. If we can control the activity of this little tiny cell medically, we will buy us some time to clean our kids with pathogen, from pathogens. And by doing that, we will heal the immune system and they'll get better. They're so sick. They are very sick and we're fighting the wrong fight. We're advertising autism. We're walking towards autism. This is not autism. This is illnesses. And if we can cure those illnesses, our kids will get better. Insurances are not covering medical expenses for our kids. Because of a label like autism, it's still, it's still, uh, it's still uh, believed that it's a psychiatric condition. And as such, it has no cure. So they fill you up with psycho meds and, 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 and don't work on real, on the cause of all these illnesses. They don't pay for medical treatments. We need to change. We need to change the minds of the insurances, the medical insurances out there. Please look at our kids, our sick kids. They are not mentally retarded. They don't have a psychiatric condition. They can recover. They can recover and we can prevent this to happen to many other kids because we know how to help them. We know how to keep them healthy. And this is Eddie in one of his worst days after a chelation we had to do for hours when he was almost four years old. And this is Eddie today. And he is back to us and he can talk and now I know what he likes and what he doesn't like. I've shared with you our story and I share with you what we've learned. Now I'll share with you what we had to do about it. We created SEA, Curando el Autismo. It's a nonprofit organization that brings parents the tools and the information to start working with their kids at home. It's very different, the response that you have. If you, when you finish and you have your diagnosis in your hands, you go home and cry. And there's no guide and there's no manual and, and autism has no cure and it's a mess and you almost lose your marriage and, and you go to the school and the teacher learns about your diagnosis and she wants your kid to use Ritalin or, or any other uh, uh, psychostimulant drugs because otherwise they won't like him in the school. Uh, you know, it, it's a challenge. You're alone. Your kid doesn't connect with you. And there's something about moms, and I know there gotta be also with dads, but I know that in my heart, when I could not connect to my kid, it destroyed me. I could not concentrate at work. I almost lost my job. Our marriage was falling apart. Our, our budget was critical. 
and so many therapies and expenses is overwhelming. We give a lot of power to parents to help other parents. In Curando el Autismo, we use the parents that have recovered the kids to teach other parents how to do it. And I'll tell you one thing, there's something about a parent standing him up in a stage and telling you, this is my kid when he was bad, and this is my kid right now, and this is what I did, and this is what you can do to help him. And if you use the power of the same parents, you can do so much. Curando el Autismo is now the biggest network of parents with kids diagnosed with autism out there that gives these services for free in Spanish for the whole world to listen. I'm only advocating for them. I'm only a tool, but everybody can make a difference. Only in one year, this year, 2011, we recovered 50 kids. They are in school, they're doing well, they had nothing to do with autism anymore. And that's only 50 kids. Imagine if we all join, how much, how many can be recovered. We believe that that's the solution. Our model is working and we're gonna keep working on it. I've shared with you our story, kids, are born healthy, they get sick, they are disconnected, they get a diagnosis. What we've learned, autism is an illness, not a psychiatric condition. What we had to do about it, to create a network that empowers parents to help other parents, to reach the recovery of our kids. As you watch the video that I'm going to show you right now, this is Eddie today. Just think about the thousands of other kids that have been left stranded in a special education system without the hope of become one functional member of the society. Huh? Which one are you looking for? Is it the moon? No. Which one? Venus? No. Eh. Saturn. Saturn, all right. Page, what page number? 138. 138, all right. Here you go. Dog tiny, no dogs in the library. You, you wait here. I call that fun. Okay, everybody put your hands up. One, two, three, yeah! <laughs> I don't think there's more to say. I think you can see there a happy boy that is enjoying his life. If nothing else happened from this day, I'll be happy. And we have long ways to go with Eddie. But if that is what I get, I think I call it victory. And looking back, for what that doctor told us that day in December 6, 2007, he was right. We will be looking into an institution when he becomes 18. We will, in fact. It's called a university. And it will be the same thing for many of our kids that we're helping. Thank you for your attention today.